You know, people say that we live in a day and age where smartphones have started to look similar and there is hardly any innovation left with the manufacturers to experiment with. Well, there is still one company out there that believes in reinventing rather than recycling and this phone is a prime example of that. For those of you who do not yet know me, my name is Sid and this is LG G5, LG's latest and greatest flagship that seeks to take on the competitors by offering conveniences that they lack. But is it good enough? How does it fare against the competition and most importantly, should you be buying one? Well, you'll find answers to all that and more in this video review. Now, just like always, before I rush through my opinions on the smartphone, I'd like you to know what all specs it offers. So here's the spec sheet. It has the highest in Snapdragon processor, a higher resolution display, powerful cameras, expandable storage, and runs on the latest software. So in terms of specifications, the phone surely feels at par with the best of the best devices out there. But how is the real life experience? Well, let's start with the designing first. The phone looks very neat from the front. It's got a black face around the whole display which I like because uh, it merges with the screen so well. Secondly, when you're watching a video on this phone, it gels with the black band and looks very neat. Uh, apart from that, you've got curved metal on the sides and Overall, you've got an almost metal design. I say the word almost because the bottom is left plasticky. But LG has an excuse for that because the bottom comes out and along with it comes out the battery. And in times where companies are ditching removable batteries in lieu of metal designs, kudos to LG for coming up with this innovation and striking the right balance between the two. But the best part is that you can swap this lower module with something of your choice. If photography is your passion, snap in the camera add-on. And if music floats your boat, then swapping the speaker might help. This seems like a big leap towards the future where you are likely to see more of modular phones. So, is the design perfect? Well, I'm afraid not. The ideas are good, but the execution could have been better. Uh, firstly, LG tries to coat the whole phone with metal in order to hide the antenna bands, which is a good thing to do. However, it also makes the phone appear cheap. Secondly, this metal makes the phone slippery. Thirdly, the camera lens protrudes out from behind, which makes the phone wobbly when lying on flat surfaces. And also, this may be a design defect, but the USB Type-C connector down below, the port protrudes out and it's razor sharp. Uh, but the biggest annoyance here is that while it's cool to be able to swap in accessories and put in modules, it's very cumbersome on this phone. I mean, you have to restart the whole phone because the battery is attached to the bottom module and not the phone itself which means every time you have to uh, snap in a new module or you have a mood swing you have to reconstruct the whole phone and while i'm a big fan of uh, swappable batteries removable batteries it's so difficult to change the one on these i'm in fact worried that i might break the plastic hinge one of these days so in terms of designing the crux here is that the designing is fair it's nothing spectacular considering that Galaxy S7 Edge is walking in the town right now. And whatever little conveniences it offers, they are not as smooth as they should have been. But the phone feels very compact to hold. And the primary, the primary reason for that is the 5.3 inch Quad HD screen it has. It's neither 5 nor 5.5. It is something in the middle and it does feel right. Though I expected it to be a bit brighter, especially in the sun. But the screen is particularly good when it's turned off because it still is on. The phone comes with an always-on display, which I did not find to be as useful as the one on Samsung and Motorola. Uh, but overall, the display is decent. However, Samsung Galaxy S7's AMOLED panel is miles ahead. But now let's talk about some place where this phone will give stiff competition to the other peers, and that is performance. The phone runs on Qualcomm's latest and greatest Snapdragon A20 processor, coupled with 4 gigs of RAM. And the overall result of all this circuitry is a powerful phone that is good in all tasks you do with it. May it be routine tasks like web browsing and opening apps or intensive tasks like gaming. And talking about gaming on the smartphone, the hardware is currently one of the best you can get out there and hence it can run all the high-end titles with absolute ease. There is no shortage of horsepower on this one. And if you are concerned about the battery part of running games, it has a power saving gaming mode too. But the only issue I have with the gaming experience is that the placement of speakers does not feel very right. My fingers kept naturally covering the speakers which are otherwise loud enough. 
And now I want to talk about the software on LG G5. It runs on Android Marshmallow and you get all the latest features that come with it. But LG tops it up with its own UI. And there are a couple of things I like in this UI. You can customize themes, animations, on-screen button layouts, and even keyboard. Plus, you get some useful apps from LG Preloaded like Quick Memo and LG Health. But there are some things to dislike here too. Firstly, it doesn't come with an app drawer by default, which makes it look more like a Xiaomi device. And there's an easy mode here, which is not at all easy to use. But all that can be fixed by installing a third-party launcher. Yet, even then, the user interface lacks class. In fact, it reminds me of yesteryear's TouchWiz. So, in short, the software feels a little inconsistent. And what else feels inconsistent is the fingerprint scanner. It is on back, which I do not admire much because it means that when the phone is lying on its back face up, I cannot unlock it. But the fingerprint scanning is very fast. Only if it recognizes your fingerprints. Because there were a lot of times when it just refuses to accept your fingerprints. And that is not acceptable for a phone that costs you so much. But where this phone charms is its cameras. It has two cameras at the back. A 16 megapixel primary camera which looks the same as the LG G4. But now you also get an 8 megapixel wide angle camera which can fit more detail on the same frame. In fact, it can capture a wider field of view than the human eye. And you can keep swapping between the two cameras with a tap, even while you are recording a footage. Also, there is this mode where you can click through all the three cameras on this device simultaneously. Talking about the stock camera app, it is pretty loaded in terms of functionalities, made be fillers, filters or modes like slow-mo, time-lapse and professional. And the result of all this geeky stuff is that the phone can snap good pictures in almost all scenarios. Take it outdoors, keep it indoors or shoot with the HDR mode on and you'll always be impressed. In fact, when the light is low, the camera feels adequate and when the light is too inadequate, the LED flash is there for you. Coming to the front camera now, it has the same 8 megapixel camera from the LG G4 and it's good too. In fact, like the iPhone, it has the screen flash for low lit areas, which you will thank when you look at your selfies the next day. So the cameras on this phone are excellent, but when compared to the competition, with better optics, Samsung Galaxy S7 and with superior image quality, the iPhone 6s feel a tad bit better. Here are some samples for you to judge. Now I'm going to talk to you about the additional features you get on this smartphone. So first up is an IR Blaster, which allows you to control your household devices by turning your smartphone into a universal remote. Next up, this phone also has FM radio in this era. Uh, apart from that, features like USB OTG and uh, NFC are also present here. But wireless charging, a feature that was present in the LG G4, has now been omitted. And talking about charging, let's come to battery. It has 2800mAh of battery, which I thought would not be able to last me throughout the day. However, I'm happy to report that even with above average usage, it will easily pull you throughout the day. Uh, and when it does get low, you can always pop in the charger. It supports Quick Charge 3.0. Uh, in my usage, it took me around 90 minutes to get this phone from 0 up to 100%. But do not forget to carry the charger around with you when you go because the phone comes with USB Type-C cable, which is rare. Uh, also, if you're a power user, you might want to buy some spare batteries and a charging cr cradle. So what you can do is you can keep on swapping the batteries. I mean, that is what removable batteries are for, right? So that covers all the aspects of the smartphones and now it is time for my verdict. Now if you have been following my reviews for some time now, you know I give clear cut verdicts. However, LG G5 cannot be rated as black or white but I'll try to be as direct as possible. Let's look at the recipe for a perfect successor. Improved design, check. Better cameras, check. Uh, unique features, check. It's a perfect smartphone. LG G5 in isolation to the competition is a superb smartphone. Yet, I cannot rate it without comparing it to the other flagships. And every time I would recommend LG G5 to someone, I would be asked the same question. Why not Galaxy S7? And that's where the problem lies. With a better display, better cameras, a better design and even features like waterproofness, Galaxy S7 is a better smartphone. And with a price tag of 50,000 Indian rupees and 
$750, LG G5 would always be compared to the Galaxy S7. Plus, if you go in for uh, the modular accessories, the price even goes higher. Uh, but I'd like to conclude by saying that I do appreciate LG for incorporating features like swappable batteries, FM radio, IR blasters and modularity on its phone. In fact, I see a lot of scope for modularity in the future. I see a lot of phones in the near future flaunting it. Uh, maybe LG G5 is a gateway to it. It's a hint of things to come. However, currently, Samsung Galaxy S7 is the best Android flagship out there in the market. So, for whom is this phone really? Well, it's for those who like to experiment and who hate run-of-the-mill. It is for those of you who want to go forward but do not want to forego the conveniences of the past. And it is for all of those who do not like buying Samsung phones. So, if, are, if you are any of these, LG G5 is here for you. Now, that's what I thought about the LG G5. If you have any questions about the device, post them in the comment box below and I'll be happy to answer them for you. And if it is your first time here, do hit the subscribe button so that you can see more of me and I can see more of you. Lastly, hit like, press share and do subscribe to 91 Mobile, India's largest gadget research website. I'm Sid and I'll